Okay, hi guys. My name is uh, Sasha Blagovic. I'm coming from the IP Architects. Uh, we will talk today about using Microtik CHR for highly available SSTP aggregation. Uh, let's talk about bit. Oh, sorry. So. Let's say something about myself. Um, I have 14 years experience in networking. I worked main, mainly in VSP industry. I, I designed and built several WISP networks. And I'm a, a Microtik certified trainer and Microtik Academy trainer and uh, I have I think all the Microtik certification available. So let's talk a, a bit about my company. It's uh, IP Architects. We are the largest Microtik consulting company in the world. We do global consulting. We do managed networks, monitoring, load testing, and development. So if you need uh, any help with uh, configurations or design, please call us. Last year, in 2018, we opened an office in Niche, Serbia. So right now, right now we are present in uh, six, uh, six different time zones. <laughs> six different time zones, and we are looking to expand to the Australia also, though, so to cover uh, that part of the world. So, I, don't know, I don't know why you're not seeing it well. Let's zoom out a bit. Uh -huh, okay, now it's okay. Uh, so, goal goal of this presentation is to get a feeling and to get a sense uh, which are the benefits uh, using virtualized platform for endpoint aggregation. How how to how to create redundant system for SSTP aggregation, and you will. Of course, you will able, if you want to use it, you, you, you will able to choose the right uh, dynamic routing protocol. And uh, we will talk a little bit about the using uh, scripting to automate the processes. So, main question, which plat platform is better? What do you think? Uh, we are basically have uh, we compared three different platforms. Uh, we compared X86, which is Microtik CHR cloud hosted router. Uh, we also compared uh, the CCR series and new ARM 411 router boards. So let's talk a bit about the differences between those platforms. We have the Microtik CHR, which runs basically on a on a bare, bare metal or on any hypervisor. It's it's better than any of the platform uh, for the heavy comp computational work, uh, but uh, it requires higher power draw. Uh, on the other side, Tilera based router boards, CCR series, it, uh, they are optimized for the packet transfer. So uh, their main job and what they are the best in it is the 
forwarding the packets throughout the router. S and any of the like uh, applications like uh, firewall will uh, result in higher CPU utilization on the CCR series. And we have uh, the ARM, which is uh, like the youngest uh, platform. And ARM is uh, something between, between Tilera and the X86. Uh, we at the IP Architects, are, uh, we, we perform extensive testing in our lab between physical hardware such as 1036, 1072. Uh, we used also Cisco's, we used uh, Juniper's and ev ev pretty much everything that we had available. Uh, we found that uh, virtualizing functions such as PPOE, uh, SSTP are scientific, uh, scientifically improves the performance and handling router OS specifically. So with that, uh, so with that, for for this kind of purposes, we of course recommend uh, recommend to use the CHR for that. The, uh, this this is also benefits when you are doing the HA environments because you, you can spin up as many uh, virtual instances of CHR as you want. Like, if you have two uh, PPOE or SSTP concentrators, you can just spin up a third one and take the load from, from those two on, on some of the hypervisor. So the, there are plenty of uh, uh, there are plenty of options available for the x 80 hardware to run CHR. If you want to build a lab, I'm, I think eBay is the, is the best way to go because of the cheap used server servers, and you can just install on it like EVNG or GNS3 to to run virtual routers and virtual machines. And of course, if you are building it for production, we recommend to use Venergens from bulk Baltic networks because uh, we set up a multiply networks with that and didn't have any issues with them. <coughs> so, talking about the cho choosing the right VPN protocol. Microtik support plenty of options for that. Uh, first one and the oldest one by Microsoft is uh, PPTP. PPTP these days is, is considered obsolete because it has many well-known security issues. It's easy to, to hijack in it and to uh, like take possession of, of, of the packets and very sensitive data. We have a second uh, pro VPN protocol from the micro, uh, Microsoft. It's called SSTP. SSTP uses SSL TLS encryption e and it, it's considered the same uh, level of security as the open VPN so and uh, compare it to the open VPN SSTP use uses port 443 which is good and basically impossible to block it by the firewalls what that means that means that we can make a tunnel SSTP tunnel from almost everywhere like using the 4G modems, uh, very very high filtered network, like public hotspots, like, uh, I don't know, we, we, uh, libraries and s such, such places, because 
nobody filter port 443. We have also uh, LTTP protocol. LTTP protocol does not provide encryption by itself. Uh, with I, in the conjunction with IPsec can provide the encryption and uses the UDP 500, 1701, and 4500. Of course, also L2TP is medium uh, on the scale how much this is secure. L2TP with IPsec is on the medium level. So it's not like PPTP completely unsecure, but it's not high, highly secure like SSTP and OpenVPN. Uh, at the end, we have the OpenVPN. Uh, have very strong encryption uh, and uses TCP1194. OpenVPN is the open source VPN protocol solution. It's popular, I think, th that it's available on all the systems, but compared to the SSTP, OpenVPN, when, when you are using the OpenVPN in, in like the high bandwidth usage network, it SSTP performs better. SSTP, SSTP will give you more bandwidth compared to the OpenVPN. So secure tunneling protocol, also known as SSTP, is one of the most secure protocols used in VPN tunneling. The protocol it's developed and owned by Microsoft, and it's available to both Linux and Mac users. But uh, I check it this double time, and it's not available anymore. It's not built in into the Mac uh, la last version of Mac. Uh, I think it's Mojave. I know. I'm not sure. So SSTP uses uh, SSL TLS encryption channel over TCP 443 port, same as HTTPS traffic, which gives us ability uh, that that port is like impossible to block. I mean, it's uh, it's possible to block by uh, searching the headers and dropping because the, uh, you, you can find type of the SSTP header and you can drop it uh, just a SSTP tunnel. That's, that's how you, but it's very difficult and very heavy computational. So uh, it's not usual to, to filter the SSTP headers. Uh, SSTP is often compared to the OpenVPN thanks to the high level of the security it offers and the fact that uh, it can bypass the NAT firewalls. SSTP, as, a, as I said, offers good speeds if you have enough bandwidth. So here are some benefits of using SSTP. SSTP offers a decent level of security, almost on pair with OpenVPN. SSTP is easy to, to configure on the devices that it's built into it. Uh, as we said so many times, it's very difficult to block SSTP because it uses, uses 443 as HTTPS. Unlike the OpenVPN, this protocol won't slow down your connection even though it uses more advanced techniques of protection. Uh, despite it's developed by Microsoft, it's available on Linux and different platforms as well. 
And uh, what is important in MyCritic uh, to MyCritic since 5.0 version of the MyCritic, you can make a SSTP tunnel between two MyCritics without using certificates. That's if that is good if you are making some something very quick, some tunnel between two two networks. You can make it without certificate involved. So these are the drawbacks of using SSTP. SSTP is closed source and solely owned by Microsoft, so you don't know anything about the protocol itself. It's completely closed. And it is possible to intercept username and password in public hotspot networks, unsecured hotspot. So be careful when you log into the hotspot without the HTTPS and try to connect with the SSTP to, to work on some remote site. Someone can see your username and password. So this is the basic operation of the SSTP. TCP connection is established from the client to the server by default on port 443. SSL validates server certificate. If certificate is valid, connection is established. Otherwise, connection is thrown down. The node below, I missed that, but it, uh, this is not, uh, this statement is not valid for the MyCritic to MyCritic uh, since 5.0 uh, SSTP connection. So you can use it without the certificate, without the problem. So the, the client sent SSTP control packets within the HTTPS session, which establish SSTP state machine on both sides. And PPA negoti negotiation over SSTP so clients authenticates to the server. SSTP tunnel is now established and packet encapsulation can begin. So we talked a little bit about the SSTP server and, uh, sorry, the SSTP protocol, but that's, that's not the whole point of, the, of this presentation. Uh, the, Main title of this presentation is how to make a uh, MyCritic uh, SSTP server high available. So in case of the primary fails, to have uh, backup on, on the second one. Uh, we, when, when we're designing the network, we, we must choose the most secure today to date solution but with keeping the easy of the configuration and the installation that's why that's why we we choose the sstp because uh, it's hard to block it through the firewalls can work through almost everything and in this scenario we are using only MyCritic to MyCritic and we don't need certificates. So we don't need to import, export certificates and do the, all of that things. It support, this is, not, this is not related to the SSTP protocol by itself, but this setup must support, and that, that is very important, this setup must support massive amount of clients. Like, we, we are talking about the thousands of thousands clients to, to the SSTP server concentrator. And because of so many clients, the use of the, the dynamic routing protocols is a must. Uh, we, we 
simply cannot do the static routing or uh, uh, bridging everything, we must use dynamic routing protocols because we are talking about uh, about a hun uh, hundred th uh, thousand devices. And we want to automate processes as much as possible using scripting. So, for first decision to make is to choose the right routing protocol. We consider two routing protocols. We consider the OSPF and we consider it using the IBGP. Y using the OSPF in this kind of VPN scenario, like we have, we are talking about thousand devices. You know, how, if, if some of the route drops, it will reflect to all of our endpoint devices. So any route flapping and anything, because we, can, we, we simply cannot divide everything into the smaller enough areas because the routing topology in ISPF uh, is not shared between the areas. So, for this kind of uh, OSPF is very easy to configure, like you, uh, we need just to enable the interfaces and add networks and that's pretty much it. We choose IBGP. IBGP, why IGP, IBGP? Because we have this, we have the control of what we are sending to the endpoint devices. What 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 routes we want to send to endpoint devices, and of course IBGP is hard to configure compared to the OSPF. So for now, design design decisions are we we will use the SSTP for the VPN protocol. Uh, we use. CHR, as we talk it for the SSTP concentrators. We are using the IBGP as interior gateway protocol. And we want to use the scripting to automate the processes for IBGP peering and any other processes. I will show you later how, how that works, but for now, we are use, uh, heavily using the, uh, the scripting because, because it's simply, you know that uh, uh, with, I, uh, with BGP, you must set the, the to add a peer, set AS number, and that, that is too much work, uh, work for we want to simplify the installation process of the endpoint. And this, this is the logical design. So, this is the logical design. We have the SSTP client, some router somewhere. And through the internet, he's making a tunnel, SSTP tunnel to the aggregation SSTP CHR1 and making another tunnel to the CHR SSTP aggregation 2. Of course, this router behind itself has some corporate network and need, needs to announce that network to the both of to the both of the CHRs. So we need to make a BGP peer to the aggregation one. We need to make a BGP peer to the aggregation two. And to announce the networks that is behind this router. So let's say that, uh, for example, that, that's our, our branch office. 
and need, needs to connect to our data center. And we have the, maybe we have two data centers. Maybe we have one. We can put the CHRs into the same data center or completely different ones. And that SSTP client connects to the, uh, via SSTP to the aggregation one and two. After that, we are making BGP peer. You will see how. So, example setup is done in EVE EMG. Two MicroTik CHRs configured as the SSTP concentrators, local authentication and IP assignments. So, no radio server, not anything like that. We have the pool, we have the one user, and that's pretty much it. One MicroTik CHR is configured as a router. It's, uh, his role is just to provide the IP connectivity between the endpoint devices and the two CHRs. All CHRs configured with one CPU, 256 megabytes of RAM on a MicroTik free license level. So, this is how it looks. This is how it looks. This is the physical connections and the actual topology of the sample network made for this presentation. We have CHR1, CHR aggregation 1, we have the CHR aggregation too. We have the connection, uh, connection between them for internal BGP peering. Why do we need that? Because if some of the SSTP clients lose a connection to our aggregation one, it will go to the, and need to reach aggregation one it will go through aggregation two and go uh, reach the aggregation one. Of course, if some of the aggregation routers have better route to some of the SSTP clients, it will go through the router that have better route to the, to the client. As you can see on, on, on this diagram, this router is just a connection router. So it provides the IP connectivity between these eight clients and two CHR aggregation routers. And this is, this is the, 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 the diagram for the scripting. So, we, we have set it up SSTP clients on all eight routers. When, when the SSTP established connection we use the feature in the MicroTik under the PPOE profile called scripts. And uh, if when someone, some cl a client connects to the SSTP server and it's running and it's established, you can run the script on, uh, on MicroTik on that event. And this is our algorithm, how we done the process of making a peer with remote aggregation router. So when the 
when the when microt SSTP client establish connection to the aggregation SSTP concentrator, first thing is the delay time three seconds, because we want to do that just to, to make sure that we have the stable IP connectivity between them. That's that's it. We wait when uh, the connection established, we wait three seconds. After that, we set up the BGP AS number, which we pre-configured in the script, like global script for the client. We probably have the global configuration, master configuration script for all of our endpoint devices and just pasting them with different IP addresses, right? And we set the internal BGP AS number on the SSTP client. After that, we uh, you must do a lot of ifs if you are doing the scripting with Microtik because you cannot just we we cannot just add a, add a BGP peer because in case that BGP peer exists, uh, Microtik will stop running the script and our script will not be executed until the end, which we don't want. So we put it the if condition to check if the peer to the aggregation CHR exists and if it if it doesn't exist we will add BGP peer. Uh, sorry, if doesn't exist we will add BGP peer if it exists we will find all local prefixes. So we basically, with a script, we will search for 10.000 slash eight addresses. We will search for the one, uh, 172 and 192168 addresses. After that, after find all local BGP prefixes, we will add them to the BGP networks to announce them to the CA, to the SSTP concentrator. After that, we need a system identity name. Why we need identity name? Because if you know in Microtik when you are adding using the script or shell, uh, adding the BGP peers without specifying the name, your BGP peers will be named peer one, peer two, peer three, peer four, peer five, and so on and so on. So uh, we didn't want that because we wanted to know exactly the name of the location and the status of the peer. So if I have in Lulin the some device that is connecting to the DC in center of Sofia, and I will call it like Lulin 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, that's that's the system identity of the dead microtic. And if I just add a peer to the SSTP concentrator, I will see there just a, like a peer one, and I don't want that. So we are basically taking the system identity name to a variable, and after that, we will get the SSTP address. Why do we getting the SSTP address? Because we need to, to tell to the SSTP concentrator which is the address, remote address of the peer, right? So, we have those, those two parameters 
and after, the, after getting the system identity name and getting the SSTP address, we will create a script for the aggregator. And this is uh, showed in separate script, a sub-process script for the SSTP concentrator. SST, what consists the script for the SSTP concentrator? So, first, we will check if there is a peer with the same address on aggre SSTP aggregator. Because we cannot add the second peer with same address. Our script will stop executing. That's, that's our first thing that we need to check. Is there, is there a, a peer already with the same address? Uh, you maybe question yourself why, how that can happen. If we have pool of the addresses of the on the aggregator, uh, MicroTix will, you know, if you're using 4G or some unstable DSL connection or something like that, that is unstable, frequent disconnection from the MicroTix will cause the different, uh, to, uh, to the MicroTix clients to receive different IP addresses. And maybe in the past, someone got that address that is just got uh, on, on the, our newest SSTP client. And we need to check that. So we are checking that. And if yes, we will set the new peer name based on the system identity name. So, yes, there is existing address, but right now there is another router using it, so we will change the name of the BGP peer. We now know that Lulin 1234 have different address. So, if answer is no, we will check if there is a peer with the same name on SSTP aggregation. Another uh, same thing if you are trying to add uh, two, uh, two peers with the same name, there is no point of that. I mean, I think you, you, you can add two, two peers with same name but different uh, remote addresses. So we will check if there is a peer with same name. And we know that that SSTP client, client in the past had BGP connection with our aggregator. But Right now, it's some, some different IP address. So we set a new remote IP address. If the answer is no, we will add, uh, just it's simple, we will add a new peer with system identity name and the SSTP address from the, that we uh, took from the SSTP client. Uh, in the in the previous in the previous slides, for example, this one. After these two routers, aggregation one and two, in your data center, you probably have another another set of the routers, core routers, or edge routers, or MPLS routers, I don't know. I'm just guessing. And you want to advertise those subnets uh, got, gotten from the, from the BGP clients. 
and want to like redistribute it to different router. You will you want to route it. Yes, that's the point of of everything, right? And for that purposes, we added the uh, check for the routing p filters. So we ba we basically to uh, we basically take the uh, prefix that we already got here at this point local prefixes and we check if that prefix is allowed and accepted in the routing filter list list and if it's not we will add prefix in the routing filters of course, after all of that, we will delete the executed script from the microtik. And when we create a script for the SSTP aggregator, we will upload the script via FTP. Maybe some of you are thinking that F FTP is unsecured, but keep in mind that we are doing the SSTP concentrator and all of the local traffic is going to, through the SSTP tunnel, so everything is encrypted. And th this is the Sample thing how the everything works. Basically, this is the aggregation zero one router. I will I will now uh, I uh, for testing purposes I disabled all of the the clients you saw on, on the picture, all of the SSTP clients, and as you will see on the video. First thing that you, you will look is this file list because all of the clients when when they connect to the concentrator it will upload the name of the router dot auto dot rsc. What that means? That means that a router with auto dot rsc uh, will be automatically executed. And see now, I will enable right now the, uh, I will enable all of the clients. You see that SSTP connections are going to be established. And you see eight SSTP connections, eight executed scripts, because you have the log also for them, and you have the eight BGP peers established and added by itself. As you can see, I set a delay time for the second uh, CHR con uh, concentrator because I wanted to do that later. You know why? Because uh, the name of the script is the same. And I delayed for 15 seconds the second CHR concentrator. So when the CHR uh, connect upload to the CHR1 finishes, I'm sure that uh, after 15 seconds, new script will be generated for the CHR2 and will be sent to him. Because it will be a conflict if you are doing the creation of the file in the same time. Of course, you, you, can, you can just uh, like modify the script, scripts and do the different names and you will not have the problem. I had that problem yesterday. So, as you can see, the 
pref local, pref local preference on BGP is to go through the SSTP tunnel first. After that, if that's not available, it will go through the aggregation number two, is if it's that available. So, this, as we have discussed, is due to several reasons to be able to easily add high availability, load balancing system using virtual resources, and CHR, we can deploy effective solution to meet the needs of our clients. Does anyone have a question? Yes? Go ahead. Uh, I didn't hear, sorry. You're using FTP to upload the root OS script, right? Uh, yes. How did you manage the credentials? How did you change the passwords? Is the login, uh, is the login shared to all the devices or there are different logins for all of them? I understand now. So, uh, under the IP services, because uh, I knew the, all the subnets from the remote, uh, remote STP clients, I uh, added that address space under the IP services FTP, and you just put the credentials, added a new, new user with FTP rule, role, FTP read write, uh, you need to add three roles. Uh, one role, one group, FTP group, but three roles. So read, write, and FTP added the user with that, in that group, and add it just into the script. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you.